Good morning, guys. Welcome to Fishful Thinker. I'm Chad Lachance. We appreciate you joining us. You've caught me standing in the middle of the South Platte River with an old friend of ours here on the show, Mr. Troy Coburn. You've probably seen him on the show before. It's been years, several few, years. Yeah, probably like four. Four, four or five, four yeah, four or five years, uh, several seasons for sure. Yeah. The, the ironic part is when you last saw Troy on the show, he was a hardcore bass guy, and we're going to poke fun about that a whole bunch, but <laughs> Troy and I met about, what, 15 years ago now, yeah. tournament bass fishing. Uh, somewhere along the way, he regressed or progressed, depending on your side of the coin, to a fly fisherman, and now that's pretty much all you do. Or not just just flies, but trout. Well, flies, I, my, my history is I actually cut my teeth on fishing with a fly rod. My grandmother taught me how to fly fish when gotcha. I was nine. So, and I grew up in Washington State, right. fishing for steelhead. Moved to Missouri, that's when I transitioned over the bass. I'm in Colorado, and it took me about two decades to uh, <laughs> to uh, heal from the uh, from the from the bass virus. The competitive bug, yeah, <laughs> the competitive right. Competitive bug, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but yeah. Now I'm not competing anymore, and, and and to me, there's just absolutely nothing better than standing in the middle of a river, even on a freezing cold morning. So <laughs> we're going to get after it, see how this goes, guys. But stay tuned, get comfortable. This should be a fun show. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. Peterson Toyota and Toyota Trucks, moving forward. St. Croix Rod, best rods on earth. Berkeley, catch more fish. Abu Garcia, for life. Damp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. So basically just casting 45 degree angle with the current, giving it a lot of slack, giving it about four or five seconds to get down and then when it starts to swing, when the line starts to tighten up, yep. I'm just jigging my line. Right. Just to give it a little bit of action. You got a sink tip? No. Oh. No, no need to use a sink tip. Oh, I just saw the color change on the line. No, this is Rio line. It, it shows, the color change shows where the load points are in the line. Oh, so got it. when you pick it up, you know. Chuck and duck. There you go. <laughs> give it some slack, four, five, six seconds, and then let that line pick up your, no, nope, there was a strike. Feel free to catch those. Yeah. We don't uh, we don't charge for hook sets on this show. And how heavy is that fly? It's uh, pretty heavy. It's a medium sized tungsten weight. So it's going to get down pretty quickly. Um, that's probably about four four feet of water over there, three and a half feet Oh, of really? Water. It's that deep? Uh huh. Yeah, that's. Doesn't look that deep. And, and I'm not actually fishing that deep water. You're fishing the edge as it comes up out of it. As it comes up out of the deep water is where the yeah. fish are going to be. You can tell because that's where you're tightening it. So, now there's a couple things. I've kind of developed my own um, ideas about streamer fishing. So I, I, I pick and choose from what other people do and that's I change the, around a few things. That's the hallmark of all good anglers. Yeah. And so, Jigging my line with my hand like this, right. you'll see a lot. You'll see a lot of guys that do this right. instead. Right. Right. And then you see Kelly Gallup who strips and jigs at the same yeah, time at the, with the rod tip. Yeah, and I that's like what it. I tend to do. I like that idea. Right. But I do not like this idea. No. Because your worst enemy when you're fishing, slack. Slack. Right. You'll never feel the take. Right. And so when I do this, it's four or five seconds right. before that line tightens up, right. and the fish has already got it and right. let it go. Right. And he ain't gonna hold it because so, it's a fly. I like keeping my rod tip pointed directly down my line. Yep. Take I all like, the slack out. I of like it. jigging it like this because yep. I can feel immediately. Right. And then I set the hook two ways when I feel the take. Strip set. Yeah. Like that. So it, I'm always in a position to set the hook that way. Gotcha. Um, the thing I don't like about jigging sideways like Kelly Gallup does, and this is just personal preference. Sure, sure. Nobody's right or wrong. Right. Um, and I'm certainly not going to say anything he does is wrong. Well, I was going to say, he's caught more fish on a fly rod than you and me combined. The so. problem is, is if I'm right here and I get a take, my hook set only allows me to go to here. Right. If I'm up here right. and I feel yeah. a take, oh, I, I could right. give him nine feet of rod. Right. You know, so it, for me, it, it increases my confidence that I'm going to really bury that hook. Right. So, and again, you cast that far bank, I want to get the, 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 the fly as close to that bank as I can. Sure. And then I want to, I want to give it 
fish. All right. I want to, I want to give it some slack to get it down. <laughs> That's first fish. That is, uh, I just want to say, I think you've made five casts, guys. And people joke with us all the time here on Fishful Tinker that we, uh, that we, um, you know, we must make it up. But that is literally, I think, Troy's fifth cast. And, uh, and right on cue. Account. Yeah, the first four he's telling me what to do. <laughs> right on cue. He oh, is netty. There you go, dude. Perfect little brown trout. Good work, Mr. Troy Coburn. Bassmaster, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> For a guy that used to be a hardcore bass guy, you made that look real easy. Now you got a barbless hook on your little streamer, right? Yep. And this is one of your hand tied streamers. Yep. Sweet. I'll put him down here in the water. Here, we don't need to hold him. I think guys can see him right there. I think you guys can get a good look. You want to get a look at him? Yeah, look at the colors. There. Beautiful little brown. First thing in the morning, burr. Now, guys, I want to tell you, it's <laughs> it's 25 degrees out here right now, just for the record. It doesn't look like it, but it's 25 degrees out here. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by... Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Evan Rood, spend more time on the water. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. This is really important, is you're fishing a reaction strike. So you gotta cover a lot of water. Right. You don't sit in the same spot. Make the same drift when, 35 when you're, times. When you're nymphing, yeah, right. you're feeding the fish. Right, right. When you're streamer fishing, you're exciting the fish. Right. You're triggering the fish. Right. And they will either eat it or they won't. Right. You, you cannot entice them cast after cast right. after cast to eat your fly. Right. That's interesting how much you're popping on that. That bait's just barely moving. Right. And just in one spot. Yeah. Now that's a that just so folks are aware, this fly you're using is not a whole long ways from a jig in the first place. Correct. And you're using a technique as far as your motion goes or your presentation goes. It's not a whole long ways from jigging with a spinning rod as well. Exactly. So this is a classic. You know, you're, we're we're both fishing today, guys, real quick with uh, with Kelly Gallup bank robbers. It's a Saint Croix rod designed by Kelly Gallup. He's a famous streamer guy. Uh, St. Croix got together with him and designed a rod that is made for throwing streamers and we're both fishing those today. Troy and I are both very long time uh, St. Croix guys. Yep. We've got the same rod. Kelly Gallup, one of the things that I like working with Kelly on and I've done several presentations with Kelly over the years is the fact that he takes what a spin fisherman does consistently and adapts it to fly fishing because there's a lots of traditional ways to fly fish. Kelly is trying to take the non-traditional approach and uh, and he has done quite well with it. I love this rod, as do you. It's which... an amazing rod. <laughs> For this purpose especially. For this purpose. There's fish right there. See him, see him in the current right here? He just followed me up. See him right there in front of you? Right in that seam? I got a big glare off that rock right here. He's right there. He just followed me up again. Oh, I see him. Yep. I no, didn't even look at it that time. No, you get one chance usually. He followed it. I don't know if it, there he comes. Oh, he's gone. He's going to get it. Got him. Oh, there we go. Nice. Got him. There we go. How long did I nurse <laughs> that fish along? <laughs> That's awesome. I dude. pestered him and pestered him and pestered him. Did you see that? Yep. How awesome was that? You could see him, he'd come and look at it and I'd pull it away from him and he'd follow it up and as soon as I'd slow it down, he'd get it or he'd look at it. And the funny thing is I watched him eat it, I just saw the bug disappear. And I'll let's bring him up here to you right here. That was, that's gotta be a fun way to catch fish right there. Here yep. you go. There you go. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> that's good fun, dude. Let me get him unhooked here real quick, and uh, we'll be real quick about this. You come right out of there. Hang on, buddy. And I gotta say, a good buddy of mine gave me this fly yesterday, or two days ago, and that's out. And you can put him in the water here. We'll pick him up and get a quick look at him. There you go. Beautiful rainbow. Look nice. at that, guys, huh? Yes, sir. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thanks for playing, baby. Here you go. <laughs> look at that. Dude, is there anything better Dude, I than just... watching the fish stalk your fly <laughs> he, and smash it like He that? stalked it. I could see him in the current before I even cast. I strung, I stripped it up, passed him real fast. He darted up on it and then he'd drift back. I'd jerk it away from me, darted up. I mean, that went on for probably 10, 15 seconds at least. Yeah. And you guys can see, you've been kind of watch here as that thing swings. It's real deep. I'm just giving it a little short 
pops. I'm not trying to get it closer to me. I just want to keep it moving, just like we would with a, with a spinning rod. You know, I just want to keep the bait moving. I'm certainly not trying to drift it at all. If you saw the fish that I just caught, uh, totally nurse him into biting and doing that by letting the fly get down to his level and then pulling it away from him basically, you know, making it where it's not available to him, where he a minute ago thought he could eat it and he wasn't sure and then you pull it away from him and it basically provoking him into striking. Yeah, that's why I said earlier, don't neglect the strip. It's not, it serves more of a purpose than just getting your fly back. There he is. Oh, oh. God dang it. I had him. He's right at the tail of that run. Yep. I came across current end with up, it. And end upstream. Well, I'm going to come across again, see if okay. I can get him to jump on it. I came across current when he got it that time. There he goes. Ah, oh, I broke him off. Oh. 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 You told me to put heavier tippet on. He told me that my tippet was not heavy enough when we launched. Or when we when we launched. You can tell I boat fish a lot. Yeah. When we got here this morning, he said, Oh, you're gonna want a heavier tip it. Nah, I'll be fine. This, this is not a light line yeah. presentation. I just watched that it's, thing pop. It's a reaction strike. Oh. Fish. They don't they don't have a chance to study it. It's in their face, it's in the strike zone, it's gone. Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Peterson Toyota and Toyota Trucks, moving forward. Lawrence, find, navigate, dominate. Let's set some background right here. Troy and I first met in the mid-90s in the Denver Bassmasters. Yep. We subsequently went on to compete against each other and with each other on a state team. We even got pictures right. of us looking like kids in Montana right. in like 2002, <laughs> uh, fishing competitively for bass. Remember, I caught a giant trout That's and a, a jerk bait with you in the boat yep. uh, and during practice. But at any rate, now you, you do this more than anything else. Mm -hmm. What similarities do you think do you bring from your competitive bass fishing days or just bass fishing days in general into the, into the river? I think the biggest thing that I bring from the bass fishing side is my, abil uh, my ability to adapt quickly. Hmm. Um, and I, I think differently than a lot of the guys on the river. You know, I'm throwing bigger stuff. I'm, I'm keying in on reaction strikes rather than feeding the fish sure. and, and things like that. So, you know, the adaptation, changing colors, changing speeds, changing depths, changing locations, changing bottom structure. Content, sure. You know, constantly rolling through all that stuff in my mind. Like we have to do in tournament. Fishing. Sure. You got to so, evaluate it quickly. Yeah. Now, now, how much are you reading the structure in the river? Because for me, whether I'm spinning or fly fishing, the structural elements of the river, in other words, the contour of the bottom of the river is the most important Key. thing. Same as bass fishing. Key. That's a beautiful thing about fishing in a river as opposed to a lake. You can look at the water and you can tell where the fish are. And you can, you, I can look at this and I can tell you where they're not. Right. I right. can point at 90% of this river and know where they are not. Right. It's not because you can see the fish. It's because you're reading the structural elements in the bottom content and making a decision from there. All right, dude, show me how to do it right here. So Mr. Bassmaster himself, here he goes. Now we're gonna poke fun a whole bunch at Troy today because he used to be so hardcore into bass that when a trout would bite when we were bass fishing, he'd be upset about it. And now, <laughs> If he happened to catch a bass right here, would you be upset? <laughs> <laughs> you know, strangely enough, I have seen pictures of smallies being caught down here. Down here? Yeah, they somehow make it through oh, the dam. Through the dam, sure. See a big old brown just roll up and smoke there something. Is. There he goes. There you go. Now that's crazy. That took you a while to get that fish hooked up. I'm coming. I don't know if he's in the current or if he's a big fish. All right. Might have to give you credit for being a bass fisherman. You're not so bad at this. A couple <laughs> bass fishermen in the river. We're doing all right, bro. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, as long as I've known Troy, he's been a bass fisherman. So I'm just going to call you a bass fisherman for the rest of the time <laughs> that I know you. And Well, and we are bass fishing for trout right that's now. That's true. We are technically. <laughs> I mean, really, we could be fishing exactly like if this, if this was a stream full of smallies, we'd murder them doing what oh, we're doing. Oh, absolutely. It's a brownie. Is it another brownie? Yeah. That's about as close to a small as we're gonna get. Right here. Yeah. Come on over here, buddy. Oh, oh, quick release. Oh, and he pulled off. There you go. Well, we got to see him anyway. Now, that, I've got to say though, that took you a while to get that thing to go. There he is. All right.
I'm coming, I'm coming. And what color is that streamer? Is that still the first one you had on? No. I switched, but I switched to a little bit brighter one. Another brown. Get, another brown, huh? Where'd all the bobos go? See, now he was in faster water. I keep feeling like we should be fishing faster water. That's what I keep telling myself. And now, are you just going to net him or are you yeah, going to? No, I'll grip. Okay. I'll grab him. Beautiful brownie, though. There you go. Now that's got a real heavy weight on it. It does. Nice. Beautiful brown. See you, buddy. Ooh, they're cold and slow. Let me see that fly. They're cold and slow at this, so this point, just like little, me. <laughs> so I'm, I'm playing off of the fish that you caught. Right. And I went something a little bit brighter. Right. So you can see the red underneath. Sure. And then the peach underneath. Right. The other one had a little bit of peach underneath, but no red. And this is a little flashier. You can see the yeah, I got the, some shine in the there. The shine in there. So just playing off of your what, what What's earlier. what's the eye on that? Are those tungsten or are those? No, this is a tungsten eye. Okay, so that's heavier than it looks. Yeah, oh yeah. So this is the fly that uh, I call the UPS man. Because it delivers. <laughs> uh huh. I knew this was coming. <laughs> Fishful Thinker Television is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. St. Croix Rod, best rods on earth. Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. They might call you the Bassmaster five years ago, but last time I called you a Trout Master, you heckled me. <laughs> so I don't know that you'll heckle me if I call you a Trout Master this time, will you? <laughs> no. Yeah, I, uh, here, I'll net him for you right here. And another brownie. Now, interestingly enough, we thought we'd catch more rainbows. Yeah. And uh, I think that's a streamer thing, personally. I think, the, in my experience, been that we catch more rainbows when we don't streamer fish than right. vice versa. Yeah. I'll let you get the hook in here. I'll hold your rod. You can deal with the fish. Thank you. Look, we have matching bank robbers. How about that? All right, beautiful. Now I'll put him in the water here and let you hold that and give these guys a quick look at him, guys. A beautiful little brownie right there. A little streamer eater. We're going to dump him out right here and let him go about his business. See you, buddy. Look at him flip over and gone. <laughs> <laughs> guys, love it. we have had fun. Now, we bucked the odds on, on purpose today. Yep. Everyone told us we couldn't catch fish on streamers. A couple weeks ago, you were killing them. Yeah, I, I was catching 20 fish in a day, and, and you know, half of them were. Nice uh, 16, 17 inch fish. So. Well, now what's happened is we've had a major warming trend in the last week, it finally, <laughs> which yeah. I never cussed in the major warming trend, but it's <laughs> brought bugs out and we're seeing a lot of bugs now. So I think the yeah. streamer bite probably is a little bit softer today than it could previously have been. Uh, we've had a great time today. Yeah, uh, a lot of fun. Bass fishing tactics for trout, always a good good concept that we like to take out there. Now, as a former, one of the best bass guys in the state, now oh, re shucks. reformed uh, <laughs> trout guy, we've had a good time with Troy on the show, so we appreciate it always. Yeah, it's dude. My we, pleasure, we've had always. a great time. Good fishermen's yep. a good fisherman, whether they fly fish, spin fish, or otherwise. So, guys, tell you what, this section of river right here is artificial flies and lures only with a limit of two trout. And obviously we didn't keep any today, but on the lake that I guide on up in Fort Collins, we do get stalker trout that we can keep. We got a holdover stalker trout we're going to put in the smoker, so we'll go check it out on the Camp Chef pellet grill, so, pellet grill, so stay tuned and get comfortable. We've got some beautiful trout right now, and we're going to put them on the Camp Chef pellet smoker. I've got some applewood pellets right here, got a half a bag of them, it's a well-used smoker. So all you got to do is pour a bunch of these in here, close the lid. The hopper's now full, and all I have to do is turn it on. Because we're only gonna be smoking trout, we're gonna turn it on to low smoke. So what we have right here, guys, is uh, basically half of a trout, and this was about a three or four pound trout. What I did was I brined it, and, uh, and I just did a brine for about three hours, took it out of the brine, rinsed it thoroughly, put it on this rack, and let it form a pellicle over the top of it. Basically, it's dry and tacky, as you can see. Okay, guys, I'm gonna make the glaze. So first thing we wanna do is we wanna fire up this burner here. So we're gonna get that going. We're gonna turn it down to low. We're cooking today on the Camp Chef Pro 90 stove right here. It's a 30,000 BTU burner. Here's the glaze for the fish. What's in here, guys? It's got orange juice. It's got orange zest. It's got lemon zest. It's got a pinch of salt. It's got hot sauce. It's got brown sugar, honey, and molasses. That's all that's in this glaze. So as soon as you get it looking like this, uh, you know you're getting really close. So what we'll do is we'll take this, we'll brush it on the fish, and then we'll continuously baste that fish about, oh, once every 45 minutes the whole time it's smoking. So we'll let that cook just a touch longer on here, and it'll come down to the consistency of some kind of a syrup. 
It's very important that you let this sit for a couple hours and get this pellicle on top where it's nice and dry. Otherwise, your fish will not do as well in the smoker as you'd like it to do. Okay, so we've let the glaze cool ever so slightly, guys. So let's go ahead and get our first layer on this, this uh, trout that we've got going right here. So we're just gonna give it a little bit of layer. We don't need a real heavy layer. We're just gonna give it a nice thin layer because what's gonna happen is we're going to uh, continuously baste this about every half hour, every 45 minutes, something like that. So the smoker's up to about 150 degrees. That's plenty of temperature for what we're gonna do. So we're gonna take this open and I'm gonna leave this fish right on this cooling rack right here. We'll set it something like that directly on the smoker and then we'll just let it sit. The whole key to a smoker is don't look at it, don't open it unless you have to. The only reason that we'll open the lid on this smoker at all is to go ahead and brush it with more of that delicious glaze. Okay guys, it's been about 45 minutes, give or take. So I'm gonna go ahead and put another round of glaze on this fish. So we're gonna go ahead and put this glaze back on here again and, uh, and make sure we got plenty of it on here. We want this stuff to be very sweet, almost candy-like. All right guys, we've basted these several times. At this point, we're pretty sure they're done. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camshaft all the way down to the shutdown mode. And what that'll do is clear the, le the rest of the pellets that are in there and get this thing ready for storage on its own. You can see we're rolling off a bunch of smoke at this point. Let's open it and see what it looks like. Now, as I pull these off of here, uh, it's important that I feel like that we thank you guys for watching yet again. Uh, you know, this is the end of our 14th season, Official Thinker Television. We've had a great time. It's our goal always to get you out there and get you enjoying the outdoors yourself, whether it be fishing or cooking outdoors or whatever else it might be. If you want information on this recipe, you can get it at fishfulthinker.com. If you want information on the pellet grill or the, or the Pro 90 stove or the grill box or the cast iron or any of that, you can get it at campchef.com. And of course, you can purchase all those items at Sportsman's Warehouse. If you want to join the conversation, we'd appreciate that on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. We're there every day. and We'd love to see you there as well. And most importantly, we hope you'll tune in and we'll see you next week. Time now for today's best catch, brought to you by Berkeley. Got him. There we go. Got him. There we go. How long did I nurse that fish along? <laughs> there you go. Beautiful rainbow. Look nice. at that, guys. Huh? Nice, sir. Beautiful. Mwah. Thanks for playing, baby. Here you go. Berkeley. Catch more fish. So that's good. Oh, there you go. Oh, <laughs> no. I got it. There he goes. Oh. Oh, God! <laughs> oh, he just fully choked it, I thought. How did I not get him? <laughs> Got him. Oh, I hung the rock. Ay, ay, ay. Oh. <laughs>